What I would like to offer you are the five major pieces to the puzzle of life. If we take the time to study each of these pieces and then put it all together, the chances of everything running well increases significantly. Mr. Schaff shared with me a straightforward formula when we first met. Allow me to share it with you. He suggested that there are typically around half a dozen factors that account for 80% of the difference. These factors include around half a dozen related to wealth and another half dozen related to health, which together offer an 80% solution to many problems. Mr. Schaff then advised becoming a student of these half a dozen basic factors. This is rather sound guidance. Success does not lie in accomplishing extraordinary feats. Rather, it involves executing ordinary tasks exceptionally well. Therefore, if one learns to excel in these key areas, such as mastering effective communication, success follows suit. While both the affluent and the less affluent can communicate, it appears that those who are well off tend to articulate themselves more effectively. Basic communication skills are essential for survival, but mastering them is the hallmark of success. Allow me to share what I believe to be the fundamental pieces of life with you, and then we can take it from there. Here's the first one. Philosophy. Philosophy is basically what you know, and what you know can really affect how things turn out in your life. It's not just what you know, but also what you don't know, that can make a big difference. Sometimes not knowing something important can really mess things up. You might have heard the saying, ignorance is bliss. But that's not always true. It's actually really important to learn things and get information, and when you do learn something, it's smart to think about it carefully before you do anything like buying something or trying something new. Before you dive into anything, you've got to decide if it's a big deal or a small one. You don't want to waste your time on trivial stuff, giving it too much of your energy. That's why we say, think before you act. Smart people learn to think carefully about everything. We all need a good way to weigh up our options in our heads. Imagine if you thought something was really important, but it turned out to be not important at all. That would be a big problem for the rest of your life. When you focus on something big, the small stuff becomes less important. We call that a big disadvantage. So, it's super important to think things through properly. That's why we have talks, songs, lectures, and discussions. We talk to each other, argue, and really think about things. We need to figure out what's really valuable because you don't want to spend a lot of time on something that doesn't matter. So, here's the deal. We gather information, think about it carefully, and then decide what's important. A big question in shaping your life is what really matters. What deserves a lot of your time, energy, and money? Trump once told me, it's not just about working hard, it's about thinking smart. Many people work hard, but they don't think hard. They don't use their minds to figure out what's truly valuable, so they end up wasting time on things that don't really matter. Figuring out what's important is a major piece of the puzzle of life. What you think about, what you know, how you think about it, and the values you believe in. If you want to help someone change their life, you've got to start by changing their mindset, their philosophy, and how they think. Someone might say, just get motivated, that's all you need. But that's not true. If someone lacks intelligence and you motivate them, you'll just have a motivated person who's still not very smart. Motivation alone isn't enough. It's easy to make mistakes in judging things, even after finishing school or university. It's crucial to keep learning. You should aim to read at least one or two books every week. It's tempting to let learning slide once you start working. But if you stop learning, your understanding of important values can become unclear. You might end up putting too much effort into unimportant things. Continuous learning is vital. Imagine someone spending all their money on donuts instead of books. We'd say they're seriously lacking in mental development. If, over 10 years, someone buys two tons of donuts but only two books, mostly with pictures, it's no wonder their life isn't going well. The problem is they stopped learning after leaving school. They didn't keep up with new ideas that could improve their business decisions and overall life. You have to keep learning even after leaving school to avoid making mistakes in judgment. The reason most people end up average by age 40 instead of wealthy is often due to making mistakes in how they use their money. So, what should a 15-year-old do to become wealthy by 40 instead of just average? Start by setting a plan for their money wisely. This might involve saving and investing rather than spending on unnecessary things. Learning about finance and investing early on can make a huge difference later in life. Having a solid plan is crucial. 
If you start making mistakes with your money early on, it can lead to a mediocre life instead of a wealthy one. Small errors can add up over time, leaving you with pennies instead of a fortune. Some might think, it's only $10, so what does it matter what I do with it? But that's when it really matters, especially when you don't have much. If you wait until you have a lot of money to start managing it wisely, you might find it's too late. We call these big mistakes in judgment. It's vital to have a good plan even when dealing with small amounts of money. But it's easy to make mistakes, to not know what to do, or to miscalculate. Here's a good phrase to remember. Life is accumulative. Our mistakes add up to what we don't achieve, while our wise decisions add up to what we do achieve. The key is to correct mistakes as early as possible. I was fortunate to have someone like Mr. Schaff come into my life when I was 25. He asked me tough questions about my finances. He made me realize that it was time to check if my financial philosophy was sound and to correct any errors early on. Now is the time to start fixing things, not later. When you hear good advice, that's when you should take action. We're teaching young people now to have a good wealth philosophy starting at age 15, so they can be wealthy by age 40 or 45 at the latest, even if they're a bit slow in making wise decisions with their resources. So, when should people start making wise decisions with their resources? As soon as they get the right information. You can't act on what you don't know, but the key is to keep learning so that good ideas keep coming to you. Philosophy is where it all begins. To make wise decisions, you need to study, read, have conversations, listen to lectures, and keep absorbing information. There's no better way to shape your philosophy than by constantly exposing yourself to new ideas. That's the first step in the puzzle of life. Having the right philosophy. Now here's number two. Attitude. Attitude is simply how you feel. First, what you know sets the sail of your life, then how you feel starts guiding you there. There are various ways to feel, aren't there? You can feel positive or you can feel negative. Consider this attitude. If this is all they pay, I'm not coming early and I'm not staying late on the job. That's a specific attitude, isn't it? If this is all they pay, I don't come early and I don't stay late. Now do you think that if you carried this attitude throughout your life, it would significantly impact your journey? As the years pass, the answer is undoubtedly yes. Another perspective is, no matter what they pay, I always come early, and I always stay late to invest in my own future. Isn't that intriguing? Attitude is a matter of choice. You can opt to arrive early or late, leave early or stay late, it's all about choice. To make wise decisions, we require educated attitudes. Emotions need to be educated to comprehend where the true values lie. It's like sending emotions to school. When children are young, a three-year-old may throw a tantrum, but we accept it as part of growing up. However, it's not acceptable when you're 30. When you're young, you may react aggressively, but as you mature, you're expected to learn to control your emotions and understand societal norms. Attitudes are now a matter of educated choice. However we feel will significantly influence the course of our lives. Now it pertains to our feelings towards a variety of aspects. Allow me to present you with a list. Firstly, how you feel about the past. When you're young, your past experiences may not be extensive, but I'm certain you've encountered some highs and lows, victories and defeats. Consequently, a part of our attitude is shaped by our emotional response to the past. Some individuals still carry the burdens of their past, being affected by past difficulties and losses. They carry these burdens as if they were a heavy weight, rather than using the past as a learning experience. Instead of viewing it as a school of lessons, they see it as a threat to their present life. Therefore, part of the process involves addressing our attitude towards the past and how it affects us emotionally. Secondly, how you feel about the future. Facing the future is a crucial and integral part of our lives. Now there are two ways to approach the future. Anticipation and apprehension. Anticipation is one way to look forward to the future. On the other hand, apprehension is another approach. Unfortunately, most people tend to face the future with apprehension, mainly because they have adopted someone else's perspective without having their own well-designed future plan. They are easily swayed to embrace someone else's vision. It's all too easy to let your days be clouded by such thoughts. Therefore, at some point, you need to determine your own outlook on the future. How you feel about the future significantly influences your action. 
If you lack confidence in the future due to the absence of clearly defined goals, you may find yourself taking uncertain steps. It's challenging to be optimistic about the present day when you haven't mapped out your future. Hence, setting goals is crucial for shaping your future. Write them down. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? What do you want to see, have, and share? Even if circumstances change in the next 12 months, the key is to start planning now. Make a list of the cities you want to visit, the people you'd like to meet, your health and investment goals, and so on. Begin by jotting them down, keeping a journal, and allow these aspirations to evolve over time. Something that seems crucial now may appear trivial in two years' time. However, it's important to have a clear vision of the future. Now set your dreams, set your goals, as it significantly impacts the flow of your day based on your confidence in the future. Here's another perspective to consider. How you feel about each other. How you feel about society, the community, and the country. That's very important. While it's easy to adopt a cynical attitude, cynicism significantly impacts the trajectory of your life. However, it's equally important to recognize that achieving success requires collective effort. The notable phrase to remember is, it takes all of us to help each of us. You cannot thrive in isolation. It's rare to find a wealthy recluse. Success necessitates interaction with others. We require society support, as well as each other's ideas and participation in various arenas, including the marketplace and societal activities. Therefore, how we feel about each other holds immense importance, and the most significant attitude is how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem and understanding your own value. It's about recognizing your potential, your intelligence, and your talents. All you need is guidance, coaching, support, advice, and experience. If you find yourself on the wrong path, it's crucial to heed the advice of those who have traversed that route before. Learning from their experiences and embracing their ideas helps us build confidence in ourselves. Self-esteem primarily arises from engaging in disciplines that lead to personal growth and value. We possess immense potential, but it's through discipline that we can harness and realize this potential. One of the main reasons for feeling inadequate is neglecting these disciplines. If you continuously let yourself off the hook or procrastinate, you'll struggle to maintain self-esteem. The ant philosophy embodies this idea. To feel good about yourself, give your best effort, just like ants who tirelessly gather resources during the summer. Aim to maximize your efforts in every endeavor. Strive to give your all, as it's the most effective way to boost self-esteem. Therefore, attitude plays a pivotal role in solving the puzzle of life's five key components. Move to number three. Philosophy first, attitude second, activity third. Attitude determines activity. Success is about doing, not just thinking. While it may seem like our lives are designed by a higher power, our mental disposition plays a significant role. Decide what you want to become, then take action. Allow me to share another philosophy from the Bible. I'm not a scholar, but my parents ensured I had a good understanding by the time I was 18. Here's the principle. Whatever your hands currently find to do, do it with all your might. This encapsulates the essence of activity philosophy. How hard should you work? as hard as you can within the time allocated for labor. In leadership management lectures we teach, when you work, work, when you play, play. Don't play at work, and don't work at play. Make the best use of your time. When you're working, give it your all, and when you're playing, enjoy yourself. But don't mix the two. Activity is a crucial piece of the life puzzle. When it comes to work, you need to determine your limits. Some people can work for 14 hours without issue, while others have physical constraints. It's essential to understand how hard you can push yourself and how much time you can invest. Similarly, when you're at university, you must assess your workload. How many classes can you handle? How many study hours do you need? It's crucial to recognize when you're reaching your limits and to replenish your energy accordingly. We all need to understand our activity hat. In my opinion, the best philosophy is simply to do your best in every activity. We call it doing your best. A man once asked me, I'm making about $50,000 a year, isn't that enough? A businessman told me, my kids aren't starving, and I've got my bills paid. We're doing pretty well on $50,000 a year, isn't that enough? He wanted to know what I thought. Here's what I said. Yes, it's enough if it's the best you can do. We don't measure enough by a specific amount. 
we measure it by your best effort. I explained further. If you're capable of earning half a million dollars a year but settle for $50,000, that's where the issue lies. It's not about the difference in income, it's about not reaching your full potential. Whether you make $10,000 or a million a year, it's enough if you're giving it your all. The key to a fulfilling life is asking yourself at the end of each day, did I do my best? If not, why not? Do I need to reevaluate my approach? Do I need to stop settling for mediocrity and start striving for excellence? So always aim to do your best in every aspect of life. That's what truly matters. Once a group of psychiatrists invited me to lecture for them in Los Angeles, which intrigued me considering I had only attended college for a year. During my talk I boldly stated, Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what I believe most affects the mind. They asked, What do you think most affects the mind? I replied, I believe it's simply doing less than you're capable of. It leads to various psychological issues. When do you truly feel good about yourself? When you've given your best effort. You don't need to win the ultimate prize. If you've done your best, that's the ultimate victory. There's nothing like the soaring self-confidence that comes from giving your all in everything you do. It's what we call the philosophy of full effort. Activity. Attitude leads to number four. Results. And that's what life is all about. Putting the first three together. Good philosophy, attitude, and high activity to achieve the ultimate results. I've got a good phrase for you. Results are the name of the game. Now the challenge of life can be summed up in a simple phrase. Let me share it with you. I believe you'll find it thought-provoking. The challenge of life is to make measurable progress in a reasonable time. First and foremost, we must avoid being unreasonable with time. For instance, if we agree to do something, and five minutes later, I inquire about your progress, and you respond that you haven't even left the building yet, it's clear that asking after just five minutes is unreasonable. Conversely, if I wait five years to ask, we would consider that too late. We cannot expect significant progress in such a lengthy time frame, just as we cannot expect immediate results in mere minutes. Therefore, we must learn what constitutes a reasonable time frame for progress, growth, change, and development. This understanding is crucial for all, especially those aspiring to leadership, entrepreneurship, or management roles where working with others is involved. We must hold ourselves to reasonable standards of time management while also expecting measurable progress within that time frame. How many years should a child spend in fourth grade? Approximately one, some may ask. Well, if they're good students, could we extend it to three or four? The answer is a resounding no. Spending four years in fourth grade is simply unacceptable. We apply family pressure, peer pressure, and various other forms of social pressure to ensure this doesn't happen. But wouldn't it be intriguing if we maintained the same level of social pressure throughout our lives? Consider this. What should society deem acceptable in terms of wise investments by age 30? Enabling one to provide for oneself and their family? Somehow, we seem to have overlooked such standards. Shouldn't it be considered desirable to achieve wealth by age 40? And shouldn't we question individuals who, by age 45, are not at least financially independent? Shouldn't it be deemed unacceptable not to be financially stable within a reasonable time frame? What about individuals who squander their potential wealth on non-essentials from age 15 to 45? Shouldn't this be seen as unacceptable behavior? Teenagers often ask their parents, why aren't we rich? pointing out that they live in a prosperous country like America. Aren't these valid questions? Consider the importance of having a sound plan versus a poor plan. Imagine a farmer who consumes his seed corn instead of planting it. Wouldn't we consider this reckless behavior endangering the future? It's an intriguing question to ponder. If we exert such pressure for academic performance in fourth grade, why not maintain similar pressure throughout life? It's a thought-provoking and debatable question. While society may ease expectations regarding ongoing results, I urge you to hold yourself accountable. Don't allow yourself to settle for less. Society may not demand much from you after university. But if you want to excel, you must impose those demands upon yourself. I urge you to carefully examine your results. We consistently assess outcomes at various stages of life, such as at ages 25 and 30, across multiple aspects, including health, wealth, culture, sophistication, lifestyle, and uniqueness. This ongoing evaluation serves to identify any errors in our actions. 
Making mistakes in our activities is surprisingly easy, which is why we emphasize in our leadership teachings not to confuse movement with progress. It's common to be deceived by busyness. Someone may appear busy for 10 hours a day yet achieve little progress. It's crucial to be busy with the right tasks. Perhaps adjustments are needed in activity, attitude, or maybe even in one's philosophy. For instance, if someone justifies tardiness and early departure due to inadequate pay, it's a sign of a flawed mindset with long-term consequences. Regularly reviewing results helps pinpoint areas for improvement and potential shifts in mindset or behavior. Now let's delve into the final piece of the life puzzle, lifestyle. Lifestyle is essentially how you choose to live, and we refer to it as the genius of living well. What's fascinating about lifestyle is that all of us, particularly in this country, have the freedom to choose how we wish to live. Interestingly, you can derive either joy or animosity from your wealth, depending on your lifestyle choices. For instance, a father may possess money but lack style in his actions, as illustrated by a simple gesture of throwing money at his son. This highlights the importance of understanding that happiness is not accidental, but rather an art to be mastered. Economic knowledge alone does not guarantee happiness or cultural refinement. Cultured behavior requires study and practice, not just financial means. Therefore, the challenge is to find joy and simplicity while striving for one's aspirations. Reflecting on these five aspects of life, philosophy, attitude, activity, results, and lifestyle prompts introspection on personal growth and decision-making. It's crucial to assess where one stands presently and make adjustments for a better future. As we conclude this discussion, remember, now is the time to shape the next decade of your life by embracing these insights and pursuing a fulfilling existence. In conclusion, the puzzle of life consists of five major pieces. Philosophy, attitude, activity, results, and lifestyle. Mastering these components leads to a well-lived life. I'm thrilled to share with you the five best ways to overcome fear and achieve your dreams. Fear is something we all experience at some point in our lives. It can hold us back, paralyze us, and prevent us from reaching our full potential. But the good news is, we have the power to conquer it and turn our dreams into reality. I know firsthand the struggles of fear and self-doubt. Growing up on a farm in rural Idaho, I had big dreams of becoming successful and making a positive impact in the world. But fear often crept in, making me question if I was capable of achieving my goals. It wasn't until I discovered these five powerful techniques that I was able to break through my fears and create the life I always dreamed of. And I want to share these techniques with you today, because I believe that you too have the potential to overcome your fears and achieve your dreams. You are not alone in this journey. We all face fears and doubts. But it's how we deal with them that truly matters. By listening to this message, you've taken the first step toward turning things around and unlocking your full potential. So let's dive in and learn the five best ways to overcome fear and achieve your dreams. Are you ready? Let's get started. Starting with number five. The fifth way to overcome fear and achieve your dreams is by continuously learning and improving. Fear is a natural part of life. It's an emotion that we all experience, and it can either hold us back or propel us forward. The choice is ours, and that's where continuous learning and improvement come in. It's the key to unlocking our full potential and conquering our fears. So what does it mean to continuously learn and improve? It means never to stop growing, never stop seeking knowledge and never stop striving to become the best version of yourself. It means being a lifelong student, always open to new ideas and willing to challenge yourself. Now you may be wondering, why is continuous learning and improvement so important in overcoming fear and achieving our dreams? Well, my friends, the answer is simple. The more we know, the less we fear. When we're armed with knowledge and understanding, we're better equipped to face our fears head on. Let me give you an example. Imagine you have a fear of public speaking. You avoid it at all costs, even though you know it could benefit your career or personal growth. But what if you took the time to continuously learn and improve your public speaking skills? What if you took a course, read books, and practiced in front of a mirror? Suddenly that fear becomes less intimidating because you've equipped yourself with the knowledge and skills to overcome it. Continuous learning and improvement also allow us to push past our comfort zones. We all have a comfort zone a place where we feel safe and secure. But the problem with staying in our comfort zone is that it limits our growth and potential. 
It keeps us stuck in the same place, never allowing us to reach for our dreams. But when we continuously learn and improve, we expand our comfort zone and open ourselves up to new opportunities and experiences. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have the time or resources to continuously learn and improve. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you that time and resources should never be an excuse. In today's world, there are endless opportunities for learning and improvement. We have access to books, podcasts, online courses, and so much more. And the best part is, many of these resources are free or affordable. But it's not just about gaining knowledge and skills. Continuous learning and improvement also involve taking action. It's not enough to just read a book or listen to a podcast. We must apply what we learn and take action towards our goals. As the saying goes, knowledge is power, but only if it is applied. Continuous learning and improvement also allow us to adapt to change. In today's fast-paced world, change is inevitable. And if we're not continuously learning and improving, we'll be left behind. But when we embrace change and continuously learn, we're able to adapt and thrive in any situation. My friends, I've seen the power of continuous learning and improvement in my own life. I grew up in a small town with limited resources, but I never let that stop me from seeking knowledge and improving myself. And that's what led me to where I am today, a successful entrepreneur, author, and speaker. So I urge you all to make continuous learning and improvement a part of your daily life. Set aside time each day to read, listen, and learn. Surround yourself with people who inspire and challenge you. And most importantly, take action towards your dreams and goals. Now, on to number four. The fourth way to overcome fear and achieve your dreams is to take action and be persistent. We all have dreams and goals that we want to achieve in life, but often fear holds us back from taking the necessary actions to make those dreams a reality. We're afraid of failure, of rejection, of not being good enough. But what we fail to realize is that fear is just a state of mind. It's not a tangible thing that can stop us from achieving our dreams. It's merely a barrier that we create for ourselves. So how do we break through this barrier of fear? The answer is simple. Take action. Action is the antidote to fear. When we take action, we're no longer paralyzed by our fears. We're moving forward, making progress towards our goals. And the more action we take, the less power fear has over us. But taking action is not enough. We must also be persistent. We must keep taking action even when we face obstacles and setbacks. Because success does not come easy. It takes hard work, determination, and persistence. It takes getting knocked down and getting back up again. It takes failing and learning from those failures. But if we keep taking action and remain persistent, success is inevitable. Think about it. Every successful person you know has faced fear and failure. But what sets them apart is their ability to take action and be persistent. They didn't let fear stop them from pursuing their dreams. They didn't give up when faced with challenges. They kept moving forward, taking action, and being persistent. And that's what led them to success. I want to share with you a personal story of how taking action and being persistent transformed my life. When I was in my mid-twenties, I was working as a stock clerk at a department store. I was barely making ends meet, and I knew I wanted more out of life. I had a dream of becoming a successful entrepreneur and living a life of abundance. But fear held me back. I was afraid of failing, of not having enough money, of not being good enough. But one day, I made a decision. I decided to take action and be persistent. I started reading books, attending seminars, and learning from successful people. I took action by starting my own business. And I was persistent even when things got tough. And you know what? It worked. I became a millionaire by the time I was 31, and I've been living my dream life ever since. Now I'm not telling you this story to brag. I'm telling you this because I want you to know that if I can do it, so can you. You have the power within you to overcome your fears and achieve your dreams. All you have to do is take action and be persistent. But I must warn you, the journey will not be easy. There will be challenges and setbacks along the way. But remember, every successful person has faced those same challenges. The difference is, they didn't let fear stop them. They took action and remained persistent. And that's what led them to success. My challenge to you today is this. Take action and be persistent. Write down your goals and dreams and create a plan of action. 
then start taking small steps towards those goals every day. And when you face obstacles, remember to be persistent. Keep pushing forward and never give up on your dreams. Now, on to number three. The third way to overcome fear and achieve your dreams is to surround yourself with positive and supportive people. Now, why is this so important? Why is the company we keep so crucial to our success? Well, let me tell you a story. Imagine you're a small plant just starting to grow. You need sunlight, water, and good soil to thrive. But what happens when you're surrounded by weeds? They suck up all the nutrients and block out the sunlight, hindering your growth. This is the same with the people we surround ourselves with. Negative and unsupportive people can drain us of our energy and prevent us from reaching our full potential. On the other hand, positive and supportive people can nourish us and help us grow to our fullest potential. So the question is, how do we surround ourselves with positive and supportive people? Well, it all starts with being intentional about the company we keep. We must be selective about the people we allow into our inner circle. It's not about being exclusive or snobbish, but rather about protecting our energy and well-being. We must be mindful of the energy and attitudes of those we spend the most time with. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I have negative or unsupportive people in my life that I can't avoid? Well, my answer to that is this. It's not about avoiding them, but rather about limiting your exposure to them. You can't control the people around you, but you can control how much time you spend with them. Choose to spend more time with those who uplift and inspire you, and less time with those who bring you down. Another important aspect of surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people is to be aware of the influence they have on you. It's been said that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So take a moment to think about the five people you spend the most time with. Are they positive and supportive? Do they inspire and motivate you? If not, it may be time to reevaluate your inner circle. But it's not just about surrounding ourselves with positive and supportive people. It's also about being one ourselves. We must be mindful of the energy we bring into our relationships and strive to be a positive and supportive influence on those around us. As Mahatma Gandhi famously said, be the change you wish to see in the world. So if you want to be surrounded by positive and supportive people, you must first be one yourself. Now I want to address a common fear that many of us have when it comes to surrounding ourselves with positive and supportive people, and that is the fear of rejection. We may fear that if we try to be positive and supportive, we will be rejected or ridiculed by others. But let me tell you this. Those who reject you for trying to be a better version of yourself are not the kind of people you want in your life anyway. Don't let the fear of rejection hold you back from surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people. The right people will appreciate and support you for who you are. On the other hand, when you do surround yourself with positive and supportive people, you will notice a significant shift in your mindset and your life. You will be more motivated, inspired, and driven to achieve your dreams. You will have a support system that will lift you up during difficult times and celebrate your successes with you. And most importantly, you will be surrounded by people who believe in you and your potential, even when you may doubt yourself. Now, on to number two. The second way to overcome fear and achieve your dreams is to set realistic goals. You see, fear often stems from the unknown, from uncertainty. When we have big dreams and goals, it can be overwhelming to think about all the steps we need to take to achieve them. We may doubt our abilities, or we may be afraid of failure. But when we break down our dreams into smaller realistic goals, suddenly they become more attainable. We can see a clear path towards our dreams, and that path is much less intimidating. So what does it mean to set realistic goals? It means breaking down your big dreams into smaller achievable goals. Goals that are measurable, achievable, and time-bound. Let me give you an example. Let's say your dream is to start your own business. That's a big dream, and it can be overwhelming to think about all the things you need to do to make it a reality. But if you break it down into smaller realistic goals, suddenly it becomes much more manageable. Your first goal could be to research your target market and come up with a business plan. Your second goal could be to secure funding or find a mentor. And your third goal could be to launch your business within a year. By setting these smaller realistic goals, you're giving yourself a roadmap to success. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. Setting realistic goals sounds boring. It doesn't sound like something that will help me overcome my fears. But let me tell you, there is nothing more empowering than achieving a goal you've set for yourself. 
When you set realistic goals and take action towards them, you're proving to yourself that you're capable, that you have what it takes to achieve your dreams. And that feeling of accomplishment is what will give you the confidence to face your fears and keep moving forward. But here's the catch. Setting realistic goals does not mean settling for mediocrity. It does not mean limiting yourself or your dreams. It simply means breaking down your big dreams into smaller achievable goals. And as you achieve each goal, you can set new, bigger goals for yourself. This is how you create a cycle of growth and success. Now I want to address a common fear that many of us have. The fear of failure. We're often afraid to set goals because we're afraid of failing. But let me tell you, failure is not something to be feared. Failure is simply an opportunity to learn and grow. Every successful person has experienced failure at some point in their journey. But what sets them apart is that they didn't let failure stop them. They used it as a learning experience and kept moving forward towards their dreams. Now, on to the number one way to overcome fear and achieve your dreams. And that, my friends, is to identify and confront your fears. Fear is a natural human emotion, and it can serve as a valuable tool in keeping us safe and out of harm's way. However, when fear starts to control our actions and decisions, it becomes a hindrance to our growth and success. It stops us from taking risks, trying new things, and reaching for our dreams. But I'm here to tell you that fear does not have to control you. You have the power to overcome it and achieve your wildest dreams. The first step in conquering fear is to identify it. What are you afraid of? Is it failure, rejection, the unknown? Take a moment to think about your fears and write them down. This simple act of acknowledging your fears is the first step towards conquering them. It brings them out of the darkness and into the light, where you can face them head on. Once you've identified your fears, it's time to confront them. This is where the magic happens. Confronting your fears means taking action despite feeling afraid. It means stepping out of your comfort zone and doing the things that scare you. It may seem daunting, but I promise you that the rewards are worth it. Think about your biggest dream or goal. What's stopping you from achieving it? Is it fear? If so, it's time to confront that fear. Let me share with you a personal story. When I first started my career as a motivational speaker, I was terrified of public speaking. I would get nervous, my hands would shake, and my voice would tremble. But I knew that if I wanted to reach my dream of inspiring and empowering others, I had to confront my fear of public speaking. So I started small. I would speak in front of a mirror, then in front of a few friends, and eventually in front of larger audiences. It wasn't easy, and I still get nervous sometimes. But I refused to let fear hold me back. And now, I've spoken in front of thousands of people all over the world, and it's one of the most fulfilling and rewarding experiences of my life. Confronting your fears also means taking risks. As the saying goes, the greatest risk in life is not taking one. Many of us are afraid of taking risks because we fear failure. But let me tell you, failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of success. Every successful person has failed at some point in their journey. The difference is that they didn't let failure stop them. They confronted their fear of failure and kept pushing forward. I want to leave you with one last thought. Imagine if some of the greatest minds in history let fear stop them. What if Steve Jobs had been too afraid to start Apple? What if Oprah Winfrey had let her fear of failure stop her from pursuing her dream of becoming a talk show host? The world would be a very different place. But these individuals confronted their fears and achieved greatness. And so can you. Remember, fear does not have to control you. You have the power to overcome it and live the life you desire. In our next topic of personal development, we'll dive deeper into how to cultivate a growth mindset and continue on the journey of self-improvement. But for now, I challenge you to confront your fears and take that first step towards your dreams. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me today as we embark on a journey towards personal development and the pursuit of success. Today, I want to discuss a topic that has fascinated me throughout my career. The five habits of highly successful people. These habits are not just simple actions. They are fundamental principles that guide individuals towards greatness. So, Fasten your seatbelts as we dive into the world of success and achievement. Habit number one, goal setting. Highly successful people understand the power of setting clear and compelling goals. They recognize that without a target to aim for, their efforts would be scattered and ineffective. They have a crystal clear vision of where they want to be in the future and create a roadmap to get there. 
They break their goals down into actionable steps and commit to their pursuit with unwavering determination. Remember, as the great Earl Nightingale once said, people with goals succeed because they know where they're going. Habit number two, continuous learning. Highly successful individuals are lifelong learners. They understand that knowledge is the key that unlocks doors to new opportunities. They read books, attend seminars, and surround themselves with people who inspire them to grow. These individuals never settle for stagnation. They are always seeking ways to expand their skills and knowledge. As we venture through life, let us adopt this habit of constant improvement so that we may become the best versions of ourselves. Habit number three. Time management. Time is our most precious resource, and highly successful people comprehend this better than anyone else. They have mastered the art of time management and guard their time fiercely. They prioritize their tasks and eliminate distractions that can derail their progress. Successful individuals understand that time wasted can never be recovered, so they invest it wisely in activities that align with their goals and values. Let us all strive to be conscious custodians of our time for it is what separates the achievers from the dreamers. Habit number four, taking action. Highly successful people are serious about turning their dreams into reality. They understand that ideas alone hold no value unless acted upon. They are not afraid to take calculated risks and embrace the possibility of failure. These individuals know that success is built on a foundation of action and are willing to put in the work required to achieve their dreams. So my friends, let us leave this room today with a commitment to taking bold and decisive action on our aspirations, for it is through action that we shape our destiny. Habit number five, persistence. Highly successful individuals understand that setbacks are merely stepping stones on the path to success. They possess an unwavering belief in their abilities and maintain a relentless determination to overcome obstacles. They view failures not as the end, but as valuable lessons that bring them closer to their goals. These individuals persist when others give up, and that is what sets them apart. Let us remember the words of Calvin Coolidge who said, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. As we reflect upon these five habits of highly successful people, let us internalize their significance and commit to incorporating them into our daily lives. Let us set goals that stretch our limits and ignite our passion. Let us embrace continuous learning and turn our minds into fertile soil for growth. Let us manage our time with utmost care and invest it wisely in activities that bring us closer to our dreams. Let us take audacious action and believe in ourselves and our abilities. Let us persist in the face of adversity and never, ever give up. These habits lay the foundation for our personal development journey, which we will delve into further in part two of this speech. They serve as the pillars upon which we can build a life of significance, fulfillment, and success. I challenge you all to adopt these habits into your lives starting today. Let these principles guide your thoughts, actions, and aspirations. Remember, success is not a result of luck or chance. It is a product of deliberate choices and habits. So, my friends, let us rise above the ordinary and become the architects of our own success. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in part two of our personal development journey. I'm thrilled to be here with you today to share my five keys to achieving anything in life. In today's message, I want to remind you that you're not alone in your struggles. We all face challenges and obstacles on our journey toward success. But the good news is, by listening to this message, you can turn things around and start living the life you truly desire. Success isn't a matter of luck or chance. It's a result of internal actions and mindset. And I'm here to guide you towards unlocking your full potential and achieving your dreams. So whether you're feeling stuck in your career, relationships, or personal growth, these five keys will provide you with the tools and strategies to overcome any roadblocks and create a life of abundance and fulfillment. Let's get started. Starting with the fifth key to achieving anything in life, which is surrounding yourself with supportive and like-minded people. You may wonder why this is so important. Well, let me tell you, my friends, that the people we associate with have a tremendous influence on our thoughts, actions, and ultimately, our success. Think about it. Have you ever been in a group of negative and pessimistic people? How did you feel after spending time with them? Did you feel motivated and inspired to chase your dreams? I highly doubt it. On the other hand, have you ever been around a group of positive and driven individuals? How did that make you feel? I bet you felt energized and ready to take on the world. 
The people we surround ourselves with either lift us up or bring us down. And if we want to achieve anything in life, we must surround ourselves with people who will lift us up, support us, and push us towards our goals. But let me tell you, finding these supportive and like-minded people is not always easy. It takes effort, intention, and sometimes, it may even require us to let go of some relationships that are holding us back. We are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So if we want to achieve greatness, we must surround ourselves with greatness. We must surround ourselves with people who have achieved what we want to achieve. People who have a positive mindset. People who are driven and determined to succeed. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I don't know anyone like that? What if I don't have a supportive network? Well, let me tell you that you can create your own supportive network. You can seek out like-minded individuals who share your goals and aspirations. Attend networking events, join mastermind groups, and surround yourself with people who are on the same journey as you. You will be amazed at the power of a supportive network. Not only will they provide you with motivation and inspiration, but they will also hold you accountable and push you to be your best self. But let me also warn you that not everyone in your life will understand your dreams and goals, and that's okay. You don't need everyone to understand or support you. What matters is that you have a core group of people who do. Surrounding yourself with supportive and like-minded people is not just about achieving success. It's also about creating a positive and fulfilling life. When we are surrounded by people who believe in us and support us, we are more likely to believe in ourselves and reach our full potential. But let me also remind you that it's not just about what we can get from others. It's also about what we can give. We must be supportive and encouraging to those around us, just as we expect them to be for us. As the saying goes, in order to receive, we must first give. I urge you to take a look at the people in your life and ask yourself, are they lifting me up or bringing me down? If it's the latter, it may be time to make some changes. Surround yourself with people who inspire you, challenge you, and support you. And remember, it's not about the quantity of relationships, but the quality. Which leads us to the fourth key to achieving anything in life, which is staying focused and persistent. Now this may seem like a simple concept, but let me tell you, it is not always easy to do in a world filled with distractions and instant gratification. It's easy to lose focus and give up when faced with challenges. But let me ask you this. Do you think those who have achieved great success in life gave up when faced with challenges? Of course not. They stayed focused and persistent, and that is what set them apart from the rest. So how do we stay focused and persistent? The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. You must have a burning desire for your goal, and it must be so strong that it fuels your focus and persistence. Without a clear vision and a strong desire, it's easy to get distracted and lose motivation. Take some time to think about what you truly want in life. What is your purpose? What do you want to achieve? Once you have a clear vision, write it down and keep it somewhere you can see it every day. This will serve as a constant reminder of what you are working towards. The next step is to break your goal down into smaller achievable tasks. This will help you stay focused and motivated as you see yourself making progress. It's important to set realistic and specific goals. Instead of saying, I want to be successful, say, I want to make $100,000 in the next year. This gives you a specific target to aim for and makes it easier to track your progress. As you achieve each smaller goal, celebrate your success and use it as motivation to keep going. Now let me tell you a little secret. The road to success is not a smooth one. There will be obstacles and challenges along the way. But it's how you handle these challenges that will determine your success. This is where persistence comes in. When faced with a challenge, do not give up. Instead, see it as an opportunity to learn and grow. Thomas Edison failed over 1,000 times before inventing the light bulb. But he did not see those failures as defeats. He saw them as steps towards his ultimate success. So when faced with a challenge, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? And keep moving forward. Another important aspect of staying focused and persistent is to surround yourself with the right people. As I once said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you want to be successful, surround yourself with successful and driven individuals. These are the people who will motivate and inspire you to keep going. They will also hold you accountable and push you to be your best self. On the other hand, if you surround yourself with negative and unmotivated individuals, it will be much harder to stay focused and persistent. So choose your circle wisely. 
In addition to surrounding yourself with the right people, it's also important to continuously educate yourself. The world is constantly changing, and it's crucial to stay updated and adapt to new trends and technologies. This will not only help you stay ahead in your field, but also keep your mind sharp and focused. Attend seminars, read books, listen to podcasts, and never stop learning. As I always say, formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Lastly, I want to remind you that success is not a destination. It's a journey. It's important to enjoy the process and celebrate your wins along the way. Take time to reflect on how far you've come and be grateful for what you've achieved. This will not only keep you motivated but also help you stay focused and persistent. Remember, success is not just about reaching a goal. It's about who you become in the process. And now, to the third key to achieving anything in life, which is taking action. You see, my friends, we live in a world where information is readily available at our fingertips. We have access to knowledge, resources, and tools that our ancestors could only dream of. Yet despite all of this, many of us still struggle to achieve our goals and live the life we desire. Why is that? It's because we lack one crucial ingredient. Action. We can have all the knowledge in the world, but if we do not take action, it's all for nothing. We can attend seminars, read books, and listen to motivational speeches, but if we do not take action, we will never see any real change in our lives. So my friends, I urge you to take action. Take that first step towards your dreams and goals. Do not wait for the perfect moment or for all the stars to align. The truth is, there will never be a perfect moment. There will always be obstacles, challenges, and distractions. But it's up to us to push through and take action despite them. One of my favorite quotes is by Robert H. Schuller, who said, Spectacular achievement is always preceded by unspectacular preparation. This means that we must be willing to put in the work, to take action, even when it may not seem glamorous or exciting. It's the small, consistent actions that we take every day that lead to massive success in the long run. Think about it. The most successful people in the world did not achieve their success overnight. It was the result of years of hard work, determination, and most importantly, action. They were not afraid to take risks, to fail, and to learn from their mistakes. They understood that taking action was the key to unlocking their full potential and achieving their dreams. My friends, I want you to think about your goals and dreams. What is it that you truly desire? Is it financial freedom, a fulfilling career, a happy and healthy relationship, or all of the above? Whatever it may be, I want you to know that it is within your reach, but it will require you to take action. Now I know that taking action can be scary. It means stepping out of our comfort zones and facing our fears. But let me tell you this. Fear is just a feeling. It is not real. It is a product of our imagination, and it only has as much power as we give it. So my friends, do not let fear hold you back from taking action towards your dreams. Instead, let your dreams be your driving force. Let them be the reason why you get up every morning and work towards them. Let them be the reason why you push through the obstacles and challenges. Let them be the reason why you take action every single day. I want to share a personal story with you. When I was just starting out in my career, I had big dreams and goals just like all of you. But I was also afraid. I was afraid of failure, of rejection, and of not being good enough. But I refused to let fear stop me from taking action. I took small, consistent actions every day. I read books, attended seminars, and learned from successful people. And most importantly, I took action. I started my own business. And although it was not easy, I kept pushing forward. And you know what? It paid off. I achieved success beyond my wildest dreams, and it all started with taking action. My friends, I want you to know that you are capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. You have the power to create the life you desire, but it all starts with taking action. So what are you waiting for? The time is now. Take that first step, and the rest will fall into place. And now, to the number two key to achieving anything in life, which is developing a plan. You see, discipline is the foundation, but a plan is the blueprint. It is the roadmap that will guide us towards our destination. Just like a ship needs a captain and a map to reach its desired port, we need a plan to reach our desired goals. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I have a plan. I have written down my goals, and I know what I want to achieve. Then that is great. But let me ask you this. 
Is your plan detailed and specific? Is it actionable? Is it flexible? You see, having a plan is not just about writing down your goals. It is about creating a detailed and strategic plan of action to reach those goals. Let me share with you a quote by Benjamin Franklin. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And I couldn't agree more. Without a plan, we are simply drifting through life, hoping for things to fall into place. But as we all know, hope is not a strategy. We need a plan to turn our hopes into reality. So how do we develop a plan that will lead us towards our goals? Well, the first step is to clearly define our goals. What is it that we want to achieve? Is it a successful career, financial stability, a happy and fulfilling relationship? Whatever it may be, we need to have a clear and specific goal in mind. Next, we need to break down our goal into smaller manageable steps. This is where the power of planning comes into play. Instead of looking at our goal as one big mountain to climb, we break it down into smaller hills that we can conquer one by one. This not only makes our goals seem more achievable, but it also gives us a sense of progress and accomplishment as we tick off each step. Now, it is important to remember that our plan should be flexible. Life is unpredictable, and we need to be able to adapt and adjust our plan accordingly. As the saying goes, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. So while it is important to have a plan, we should also be open to change and be willing to pivot if necessary. Another crucial aspect of developing a plan is to have a timeline. We need to set deadlines for each step of our plan. This not only helps us stay on track, but it also creates a sense of urgency and motivates us to take action. Without a timeline, our plan can easily become a never-ending to-do list. But having a plan is not enough. We need to take action. We need to put in the work and effort to make our plan a reality. As the great philosopher Aristotle said, well begun is half done. So let us begin our journey towards our goals with a well thought out and strategic plan. Now, I understand that developing a plan can seem overwhelming and time consuming. But let me tell you, the time and effort you put into creating a plan will save you 10 times more time and effort in the long run. It is an investment in your future self. But most importantly, having a plan gives us a sense of direction and purpose. It gives us something to strive for, something to wake up for every day. It is the fuel that keeps us going when the going gets tough. And trust me, there will be challenges and obstacles along the way. But a well-developed plan will help us navigate through them. I urge you to take the time to develop a plan for your life. Remember, the goal without a plan is just a wish. And I know that you are not just wishers, you are doers. You're here because you want to achieve greatness in your life. And I believe that with discipline and a well-developed plan, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. And now, to the number one key to achieving anything in life, which is setting clear and specific goals. You see, goals are the foundation of success. Without them, we are simply drifting through life aimlessly, going wherever the wind takes us. But with clear and specific goals, we have a sense of direction and purpose. We have something to strive for, something to work towards. And that, my friends, is the key to achieving anything in life. Now you may be thinking, but Jim, I have goals. I want to be successful. I want to be happy. I want to have a good life. And while those are all great aspirations, they are not specific goals. They are vague and general statements that do not provide us with a clear path to follow. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So the first step in achieving anything in life is to set clear and specific goals. This means taking the time to really think about what it is you want to achieve and then writing it down. Yes, writing it down. There is power in putting pen to paper and making your goals tangible. It gives them substance and makes them more real. But it's not enough to just write down your goals. You must also make them specific. For example, instead of saying, I want to be successful, ask yourself, what does success mean to me? Is it financial success? Is it a successful career? Is it a happy and fulfilling personal life? Once you have identified what success means to you, then you can set specific goals within each area. Let me give you an example. When I first started my journey toward success, I had a very specific goal in mind. I wanted to become a millionaire by the time I was 30 years old. Now that may seem like a lofty goal, but it was specific, and it gave me a clear target to work towards. And guess what? I achieved that goal at the age of 31. 
And it all started with setting a clear and specific goal. But setting clear and specific goals is just the first step. The next key to achieving anything in life is to create a plan of action. You see, goals are just dreams without a plan, and a plan is what turns those dreams into reality. So once you have your specific goals in mind, it's time to create a plan of action. This plan should include specific steps you need to take in order to achieve your goals. It should also include a timeline and deadlines for each step. This will keep you accountable and on track towards achieving your goals. And remember, your plan may need to be adjusted along the way as circumstances change. But the important thing is to have a plan in place to guide you towards your goals. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, I have set goals before, and I have created a plan. But I still haven't achieved what I want. And to that I say, have you taken action? You see setting goals and creating a plan is only half the battle. The other half is taking action. And not just any action, but consistent and persistent action. You cannot expect to achieve your goals by simply thinking about them or talking about them. You must take action towards them every single day. And I know it's not always easy. There will be days when you don't feel like it, when you face obstacles and challenges. But that's when you need to remind yourself of why you set those goals in the first place. That's when you need to push through and take action, even when it's hard. And speaking of challenges, let me tell you something about them. Challenges are not meant to stop us. They are meant to strengthen us. They are not obstacles, but opportunities for growth and learning. So when you face challenges on your journey towards your goals, embrace them and use them to become better, stronger, and more resilient. Now, as we wrap up part one of this speech, I want to leave you with one last thought. The journey towards achieving your goals will not be easy. It will require hard work, dedication, and perseverance. But I promise you, the reward at the end will be worth it. The satisfaction and fulfillment you will feel when you achieve your goals will be unlike anything else. So my friends, as we move into part two of this speech, I want you to think about your goals. Are they clear and specific? Do you have a plan of action in place? And most importantly, are you taking consistent and persistent action towards them? Remember, the number one key to achieving anything in life is setting clear and specific goals, and it's never too late to start. So let's all commit to setting and achieving our goals. And I'll see you in part two for more on personal development. Thank you.